Hi, it's Lori. We're going to answer those questions about Chapter 1. First question was, how are profits and risk related? Before we can answer that question, we need to understand what profits are. And profits are revenue minus expenses. If we increase the risk, then we need to increase the profit to, to make it worth our while. You can make a profit by selling goods or services or both. The second question we had was, what is a stakeholder? And who are they? And which ones count? Well, stakeholders are people who care about what a firm does. You can check out the wheel of stakeholders on page six, pretty helpful. Do shareholders or who are the owners of the company matter most, or customers or employees? It all depends on the situation. It also depends on whether you're a for-profit corporation right here or a not-for-profit corporation right here. A profit corporation is trying to make a profit and generate income for the owners, whereas a non-profit does not have that objective. It is simply trying to provide a service or good for society. The next question we have is, how does the economy... Oh, no, we have a question about the five factors. But before we get to that, we need to talk about entrepreneurs. I'm one, so this is one of my favorite topics. Entrepreneurs are the key to building wealth. The advantages of being an entrepreneur are that you can have a big potential payroll payoff, you can be your own boss, and uh, it's very fulfilling. The disadvantages are, of course, that it's risky, there are no benefits usually, and it's very low pay at the beginning. When I started my job um, here at Iroquois, I had left Procter & Gamble, and I took a salary decrease of 50%, so I was making half my salary. But I did get a third of the company, and I think in the long run that was a great investment. Again, if you're going to increase your risk, you need to increase your reward. So most entrepreneurs are looking for the big hit. The next question was, how does technology affect business? But before we get to that, let's talk about the five factors of productivity. I made up a little saying here that should help you remember it. Lori loves cake, a true statement. Land, labor, capital, entrepreneurs, and knowledge combine to create productivity. We also needed to talk about the economic environment and taxes. In this particular case, government can help. So property rights, making sure that people have the rights to profits, making sure there are reasonable tax levels and favorable laws and policies in place and good courts to enforce those. You need a tradable currency and you need minimal corruption, if at all possible. That really helps. The next topic that we had to talk about was technology. And technology often helps us increase productivity and increase quality at the same time. And let's talk about these three terms, very important. Efficiency is using the least amount of inputs. Effectiveness is getting the desired outcome. And productivity is maximizing your output per effort. And the United States recently has gained tremendously in productivity, largely due to the help of technology. Next, let's talk about competition. I like to think of it as simple as BCD. You're trying to do it better, you're trying to do it cheaper, or at least you're trying to do it different. And that's how you succeed in competition. Social changes. Shifting demographics are the main thing that we want to be concerned about in social changes. We have a much more diverse population, and that's affecting our workforce as well as our um, customers and consumers. Our age of our population is increasing. We have an aging population, many more people who are older, and that's going to affect not only what we offer, um, as far as goods and services, but how much people can pay for them and who can support things like social services um, and social security. And then finally, family structure is very important right now. We have many single, fam single um, parent households, and that affects working um, conditions as well as consumer preferences. Next, we want to talk about global impacts. So, some of the global impacts that you'd be interested in are your conflicts abroad, war and terrorism have a tremendous effect on businesses, competition from new sources, India, China, um, they, uh, Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, and also South America. A number of countries are coming on strong, particularly Brazil, and all of those countries are, are coming into the global economy, and in order to make room for them, the United States has shifted its place <clears throat> in the global economy. 
environmental impacts. Obviously, we have many laws here in the United States about what we can and cannot do, um, but those laws don't exist in China, for example. So the question is, does that create an unfair uh, com competitive environment because we have charges and costs related to protecting the environment that our firms have to pay, and if their firms don't have to pay those same costs, they are, can offer products um, and services at a much lower price than ours. And that's a big question. And finally, there are alliances, free trade zones. So there's the World Trade Organization. There's uh, trade agreements in Europe, in the <coughs> European zone. Um, and there are agreements with uh, between us and Latin America. And all of those trade agreements can affect your global um, economy. Finally, we have to talk about the history of the United States, the economic history. I've drawn a picture for you. I'm sure you're going to like this. My drawings are very good. We began as farmers and uh, we moved into the factories, those little factory workers on a factory line right there. Oops, right there. Um, and then finally we've gone into the service industry. How can I help you? Um, but we are moving into what we believe to be the next age, which is the information age. And that is a little person right here, a little person in a chair working on a computer in case you can't see my drawings. So <clears throat> the question is where in the future will the United States be in an information economy? Finally, well, we're getting close to the end. Oh, I think we are the end. We just need to talk about with you and what jobs and um, opportunities might be available to you as um, graduating seniors. I think the most important thing to remember is that it is highly unlikely that you will be doing the same thing for your entire career. So the most important thing is to pick up skills that are easily generalizable, like critical thinking skills, people skills, presentation skills, communication skills. <clears throat> and the ability to learn is the most important skill because you'll have to continue to learn throughout your career. Um, and that's it for chapter one.